Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from ScrapbookingWithMe.com and Me Crafty Scrapper here on YouTube and Instagram. And I wanted to share with you a little something that I made. And I wanted to see if you could tell what it's made of. It is made from junk mail window envelopes. And I got this idea, uh, My Porch Print youtube channel and i will link the video that i watched of hers that's kind of like this i changed mine up just a tad but um i got the idea from her so i will give credit where credit is due and um my porch prints they have um lots of cute little junk journal ideas over there so go check them out after you watch this video of course but i will link her video below that i drew inspiration from yes this is a pocket tag and it is made from your junk envelopes that you get in the mail that have those little windows in them they are very flimsy so you will need to um put cardstock on them to strengthen them up but here is the pocket made from the envelope and then there is my tag that i put inside of it and you can make this out of all kinds of scraps that you have laying around if you have um some papers or card stocks that were left over from a kit you could totally make this easily out of little bits of scraps and i've just pieced it together and inked around the edges to distress it and i stamped here put a tab on top and there you have it there is our pocket tag made from junk mail uh, window envelopes so I will show you how I made this like I said you will need um, some scrap cardstock um, don't even need big pieces I do have a few six by six pieces left here but most all that I will be using is scrap sheets and if you want to put ribbon at the top instead of a tab you will need that but I do have some tabs that I punched at the shop the other day you will need a circle punch i used a one and a half inch circle punch and if you want to stamp so that um wording or, or a message of some kind is shown through your window you will need some type of little alpha um, stamp set you could always use stickers you could use word quotes they would just be sideways and i don't think that would matter in the least little bit but whatever you would like to use to show through on your window there you'll need that and a few little die cuts you could even just tear up some of the paper and make you a little cluster here and that would be fine too you will need adhesive of course and a paper trimmer let's get started making our own pocket tag from junk mail window envelopes now what you will need to do first is cut your envelope so it is not sealed <laughs> And there's something we even wrote on the back of this one it is not sealed and you will need to leave it unsealed until pretty much close to the end and then what you're going to do is you are going to trim this envelope so that your window is at the bottom now this envelope is going to be different than this envelope the window was on this side for this envelope your envelope is going to be different you're going to cut your envelope about that will give you about an inch above where the window starts so about an inch above where your window starts is where you want to trim your junk mail envelope okay then you can save this if you want it will just be a um, pocket for a tag without a window on it but you can certainly save that part for later so you're going to come to the back I'm going to move this one out of the way so we can just focus on this one you're going to turn it to the back and you are going to very carefully peel back this bottom piece that's on every junk envelope that's how they put them together and you're going to peel that back 
if you have a little spatula that helps sometimes too and if it comes through you're okay because you can cover this back or if you're going to put it in a junk journal it doesn't matter what the back looks like because you're going to adhere it to your junk journal either the page or the inside cover so it doesn't matter if it's torn up looking because you're going to cover that back up all right the reason you're taking it apart like this okay so here's your junk journal cut an inch above the window here's your flap open there's that bottom flap you just tore open okay and there's the back side this back side has got to be decorated like here the back side is decorated so when you pull this tag out it's still dressed up and you don't see this ugliness um, when you pull your tag that you made for the pocket out. So you've got to decorate this part. Everybody's envelope is going to be different. So I can give you measurements of mine, but everybody's is going to be different. I am looking at... Let's see, three and a quarter inches wide by whoop. oh, it looks like four and a half tall. So four and a half tall by three and a quarter wide. So here's where you'll need a slightly larger piece of scrap paper and I really like that so I'm going to cut this slightly under the three and a quarter mark just because you want it not to be right on that line when you close it up so it doesn't pucker okay but go ahead and go all the way up and we were looking at what again I've already forgotten see that's how airheaded I am four and a half so four and a half by three and a quarter. So I'm going to come down to three and an eighth wide. And then four and a half tall. And you're going to place it and look and place it and look and place it and look <laughs> that's always my motto you've got to um, measure quite a few times close it up make sure of what you see in the background and that is beautiful i love that so we are good with that when you close it up you will have this little naked part over here you can barely see it because that's going to be adhered and you're going to have this little naked spot on the side just barely and I will show you how to cover that up in just a minute because I did it in that one all right so go ahead and get your glue of choice and put it all over the back side and the inside does not really matter because um as far as distressing putting the distress ink on because it's not really going to be seen the edges are not going to be seen so you don't even have to distress this inside section and you want it to go all the way to the top it doesn't really matter if it goes all the way to the bottom but you do want it all the way to the top but not lapped over so you'll turn it over on its back make sure and then before the glue dries completely you're looking on the inside making sure nothing's puckering and it's not so you can get your bone folder and get that adhered down now all envelopes have wonky little links and widths and that's why that is stuck out there like that but it's like that for a reason so we're going to leave it like that it's not going to show on the inside anyway so we are good there make sure we don't have any glue showing and if you have any little edges 
peeking over the actual junk envelope itself, go ahead and take that off. Now, we are not going to um, glue this all together yet because we will have to do a notch here. And if you have a well tail circle punch, you could go ahead and do that, I guess. But you need to get your um, pattern paper on and you could go ahead and um, close it up if you've got a well tail. I don't. I have an old Creative Memories huge contraption of a <laughs> stamp and it doesn't work that easily for me. So I've got a lot more clearance that I have to work with here. And so it's kind of blindly working. So I have to leave this open. If you have a whale tail circle punch, go ahead and um, glue it all together. But this is how I'm teaching you to do it. And once you do one, if you figure out a easier, better way, go for it. But this is how I am teaching this one. Now, I am using the Vintage Photo Distress Ink by Tim Holtz to do my distressing. If you do not want to distress the edges, you don't have to, but I just love the Christmas, Christmas, the crispness that it gives <laughs> The papers. Oh, I'm so goofy. All right, so before you start adding any paper to the front, you're going to go around that window and give it some distressing. And this is just in case when you're adding your paper, any of this white shows from the actual envelope, it will be distressed and looks look like it goes right along so that just helps you to get your mistake taken care of if needed and there i got it on my beautiful desk let's get that off of there all right so this of course will be your top because that's where it opens and we're going to seal this back in just a minute when we cover it up i haven't even covered the back of this one up because it's just going to go in a junk journal and um, I don't have to worry about that because that is never going to be seen. It's going to be on a page, adhered to a page in a junk journal. But you can see how we um, adhered that back together. All right, now this is the fun part because you can do whatever you would like on this um, front. You can make it all one type of paper. You can use multiple patterns however you would like to do it. I think I will use this for the top and at the bottom I have enough even with this circle punched out of here to do that on the bottom. Um, for the sides I think I'm going to go not so printed this time so I think I will use that on one of the sides because it goes with this and then yeah that on the other side okay so once you pick out what patterns you would like top and bottom are going to be your last ones to put on sides are going to be first so what I did was just left it as long as it's longer than the envelope leave it the length that it is if you have a tear tool and you want to use that that is perfect go for it I don't so I'm just going to tear by hand I'll maybe use that later before you adhere this down you want to distress the sides the torn edge if that is your fancy so if that's what you want to do go for it. With that, you can barely tell that it was even done. Alright, so when I tore it, it got shorter than the actual envelope. And I actually did that on this one also. When I tore this uh, ledger looking cardstock, it was shorter 
than covering up the white envelope there so I added this little piece and I actually think that I like that even more than just the four clean lines around the edges so what I'm going to do is adhere this just so the window is covered on the edge just barely and then I will come back on here and put another torn something and I think I'll do this here I'm going to go like this and if you are working with directional paper of course make sure that you do that on the correct side so there I like that I could even do it like this so I'm going to put my clean edge up against the clean edge of this envelope and then I'm going to come in and cover up the rest of that there after I ink it there we go and then I am just going to put my glue because we know we've got to cover all of this and it's all going to be covered all the way up to the very edge of the window so I put my glue on the envelope itself turn this over and get it flush to the edge and we will cut off excess in a minute and then get this how you want it I'm going to pull back from that just a touch so the entire window is not covered up on that side and then get that excess glue off of the window and then turn it over and cut off your excess making sure not to cut the actual envelope anywhere because that would never do having holes in your envelope your tag would fall right through okay there's the one side covered and then I'm going to use this to cover this side and I'm just going to tear off the least little piece or edge here okay then I'm just going to add a line of glue down the edge and then around and not all the way to the window because I don't want to cover the window up much on that side because I have covered it up a little bit on the other side and you want to be able to put a saying a word of some kind of phrase maybe in that window that's the whole point of using the window envelope so I'm going to pull it away from the bottom there so it's showing and then get off that excess glue All right and then cut off my excess paper and I know what some are saying why doesn't she just cut it the exact length of the envelope um I've done been there done that and I either cut it too short or I cut it wrong wonky sideways not straight and then it doesn't end up well for me so I just like to leave it big and cut off excess okay 
So that is good there. Now we will add our bottom pieces. And you want to go up and cover up the little curve that the envelope naturally has. Okay, and I'm going to... Okay, and then I'm going to get at the very tip top and just barely tear because I want this faded vintage blue ticket showing because it goes along with that other blue that I used. And now you're going to glue at the bottom and just barely go at the bottom of that window and you're going to go all the way across across your other side papers ink the top because that's when you have the chance to do it okay I'm going to come up just a touch to make sure that curve at the bottom of that window is taken care of get off any excess glue there and I'm going to let that sit for just a minute and let that glue dry while I tear this one and make sure that I have enough let's see I don't think I'm going to have enough so what I'm going to do is go all the way flush to the top and then just tear a little piece of something to go right along here to cover up that curve so that it looks like it is our design and not theirs. Okay, I think I will use this. I have little glue, tiny little glue pieces all over my fingers. That's why I keep flicking my, flicking my fingers. <laughs> like I am. But I'm going to tear like this and then come in and tear the bottom because both edges will need to be torn pieces. I'm going to add there and then I'm going to add here Let's see, I'm going to turn that over, see what that looks like. Ooh, I like that better. All right, so I'm going to tear the bottom of this one and then ink this. I'm going to put my line of glue, make sure to get in that edge so that I know when I'm putting my piece down that that is where I want to go all the way to on that window. All right, so we're going to put this one down first and stay with that edge. there <laughs> and I have way too much glue on this envelope all right I'm gonna add here pull it up onto this here and get that excess glue off okay so now you have this wonky looking piece of art and you're going to flip it over and you're going to cut off all of your excess paper and even my scissors have glue on them. I will have to give them a thorough cleaning when I get done with this little project. All 
And if you do not cut straight, don't worry about it because you're going to ink the edges. So it doesn't matter. You'll cover up your boo-boos when you start to distress ink those edges. And I've got this edge just a little wide, so I want to trim off a little bit of that. And then trim that. Alright, so much more cohesive that way. Let's get all of our scraps off here. Alright, now I might can use those on a later tag. Alright, so you can tell that one is taller, one is shorter, and that's just your junk um, mail envelopes. They're all going to be different sizes, but I just found that doing this, if you will um, trim your envelope about an inch above the window, it looks a little bit better doing that. And see, this one has a bigger window than this one. It's all up to how your junk mail envelope that you start with looks like. So, I'm going to ink all of my edges, not being too concerned about the top because I've still got to cut my notch out of there. Get the bottom there. That is cut a little bit wonky, so I'm going to trim that piece there. And then ink. Okay, so we haven't sealed anything on the back side, so we still know that that is the top. Even though I say that, and some glue obviously got back here, or I've, I'm sweating one. <laughs> All right, so now we can do our notch here. And what did we say? How wide? This front was, we haven't, yeah, we did measure the front. Uh, it is almost three and three quarters, so we need to make our center about, let's get a pencil here, make our center here. And make myself a good line so that when I put this monstrosity of a punch on here and really make sure that your paper is dry <laughs> that adhesive is dry before you put your um, punch on there okay then you need to ink that edge so it looks like the rest and then you are going to fold that back on and then you're going to adhere this flap and this flap onto the back and I'm doing that with score tape because my luck with projects like this when I use liquid on the back it tends to seep out everywhere and then I would have an envelope or a pocket for a tag that I couldn't even open so I'm using score tape on the back of mine feel free to use liquid and then I'm going to put adhesive on the actual envelope flap a couple of times because this is just fourth inch okay and then I'm going to take my backing off and then you are going to fold the bottom flap up first adhere it and then the side flap and adhere it and 
And if you have any tape that decided to sneak out the side, now is the time to get that off. And then you open it up and make sure, yes, that everything is free. Now, I was talking about earlier about that little naked spot right there. So when you take your tag out, you'll be able to see that little naked spot. It worked the same way on this one. And I just added a torn piece of paper down in there with it. So what I will do is get a torn piece. It doesn't even have to match. But I just so happen to have the paper that does match it. And I'm just going to tear that piece. And this is just cosmetic. You don't have to do this, but I'm just covering up that one little piece of the regular envelope inside of that regular envelope that you can see from the outside. I'm just going to cover that up. And try not to get glue everywhere and then try not to let the piece slide down and get glue everywhere so I'm going to stick my scissors down in there just to get it flush with the edge and make sure that it is where I want it to be here and then press down on it there we go We've got that covered up there. I'm going to run my finger down in there just to make sure I don't feel any wetness from that glue because we don't want it to stick together. All right, so now we have our pocket and we are ready to make our tag for the inside. Now, I have... this cardstock and it's not thick cardstock at all so I'm going to double layer it on this one I had used the cardstock added a few things and I added some coffee dyed just coffee paper onto the back of it but with this one I think I'm just going to double it up so I need to measure my pocket and remember that you have glue down here that is holding that bottom flap so you're not going to be able to push that tag all the way to the bottom so when we measure we we'll want to take off about a quarter of an inch because I want my tag to be pretty flush with the top of this pocket so we are looking at four and a half just to see where that gets me and then my width is three and five eighths so I think I'll make my pocket a little less than three and a half wide and I'm gonna go four and a half tall and just see how that works push that up so you can see me cut all right, so wide, we're going to go three and a half. And tall, we are going four and a half. And let's see what we got here. If we need to cut it down. Oh, it's almost perfect. Look there. Almost perfect. Okay, so I'm going to cut an eighth off of the height. And I'm going to go ahead and cut an eighth off of the width too. It goes down in there, but it's not gliding as easily. So let's cut off a little bit. There's an eighth. And there's an eighth now let's see what that gets us you know a lot of projects like this is just trial and error okay we're good 
I could have went a sixteenth on the top, but that's okay. Once I add my topper, we will be fine, and it glides easily up and down. So, like I said, this is thin cardstock, so I'm going to add a back to it. I'm going to double it up. Let's see if that is wide enough. I do believe, and I think I might even like that side better. So I'm just going to eyeball this and trim with my scissors. I love that post script, but I also love that. That's very pretty. But a lot of that's going to be covered up. So I think I'll still go with that as my front, and I'm just going to tape these together. Now, if you wanted to write on this tag, then you would need to probably use this side so you could see writing. But if it's just decorative tag that's going to go in your junk journal, you don't have to. You can make it whatever you would like. It's your junk journal and you use it how you would like to use it, right? Right. So, we are going to add this pocket and see how it looks. I really like that. And you could turn it over and add that side too. It looks great either way. All right. Now, for our word. And we've got to dress up this tag. I will pull this one out so you can see that. Then I'm going to use my crop it all. And I did not get that notch in the middle so I'm going to come here. Add me a circle. Isn't that smart of me? <laughs> Add me a circle there so I'll know where to put my hole for my hug snug seam binding. All right, that's going to be my front. So I'll line these up, add my loop through first. And then pull my tails through the loop as tightly as I can without ripping the tag and that gives you your loop on the front to kind of help camouflage that hole. I like that. And then we've got to add a spot. Now you could stamp directly on this and I think that's what I'm going to do. On this one I added just because my tag background was a little darker I added this torn piece. But see when you put this in the pocket you really can't see the tag at all unless you pull it out. So I think I'm just going to stamp directly onto that pattern paper and then put me some embellishments around it, some torn edges and things around it. But let's go ahead and stamp that. And I'm going to add Okay, you can barely see editor. I'm going to add me a little bitty pencil mark just so I know where I can go up to and then go down to. So the bottom of this. Then I'll erase the or cover that up. Okay, and then. There we go. That'll give me enough to know 
what parameter I need to stay in. And I am just going to stamp. This one's always a good one. Love. Let's just stamp love. Okay, I'm going to find my mark at the top there. And just start my word. L O Okay. V and E. So we will be plenty above our bottom mark. So that makes me feel good. L O V E. There we go. And then we're going to add some pieces and parts around. I think I'll add that there. Give me some inking on the edges. see here where my tails are not completely or not exactly the same. I'm going to trim those a little bit better. And let's see. I may add a die cut maybe. I like that with yes I like that so let's ink the edges and then I'll have to trim off the side and I'm going to do a little bit of distressing in the middle and then dirty up this a little bit since it's on stark white paper and dirty up the middle some yep I likey likey I'm gonna add it like this and like that maybe okay Not going all the way to the edge because I'm going to trim that off. Okay. I think I'll just do it straight on, making sure not to put it toward the edge. So I'll get all of my butterfly on. Just do it straight on. Okay. And then trim off. The rest of that die cut there and then distress that edge back. Ooh, I like that. So pretty. Now let's see what shows through the window. I think that's my favorite part. When you get done with the tag how you want it and then you see what shows through the window. And look, it's just our word that shows through. So it's like a surprise when you pull it out. And you have more on the tag, but it's all hidden because of the pocket. So, there is our project. This one I made beforehand, and it shows some more of the stuff around it. And Strong is over more to the edge. Love is more over to the edge here on this one too. 
but we did add some room to this tag so you can move it on over and get it in the middle so that works too and even if you are not a lover of um, vintage style um, things you can make these out of modern day papers and card stocks too you don't have to use just um, vintage papers if you're not into vintage papers use whatever papers you would like I am looking for who I like that especially after we get it um, inked up that will look really cute let's see what kind of little words or something we have here that we can add on to that that's too big Ooh, I like that. All right, let's put that up. Do I want to add the whole thing, or do I want to cut it down a little bit? Let's cut the one line off and see how that looks. Yeah, that's better. Look how particular I am. I had to cut off just that little eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to muddy that side up a little bit. Oh yeah, I like that. Love it, love it. And I think I'm going to add a bit of torn onto this yep okay and I'm gonna muddy up this side okay let's get this Adhered on and there hold that down because it's got a little bit of a hump to lay on get me a little bit more down here and then get my bird adhered yeah I like it coming over that window a little bit. I like that. Cute. I like that. Very pretty. Alright, so that's that one finished. I had already finished this one. And for all of you, like I was saying about the um, vintage papers, if you don't like vintage, uh, the vintage look, which I do. I love it. I love it. But Every once in a while, I like going with a clean look also, even though I still use my Distress inks. So, I am going to make one more of these. You already know how it's made, because I just went through it with you. But I'm going to make one more, and I'm going to use some modern paper and show you what this looks like even if you don't use vintage paper and uh, I'm just going to come right back and show you the finished product so I'm going to go make that and I'll be right back and here it is guys this is a modern paper version of these so you can do vintage you can do modern papers however you would like to do your pocket tags made out of junk mail window envelopes it's totally up to you if you are going for a more modern look, go ahead and do it that way. You don't even have to ink the edges like I did here. I did go ahead and ink them just because I like that 
finished look but if you want to go clean and simple you can do modern and not distressed edges and you don't even have to tear the edges if you don't want to you can go straight down the edges of that window from the junk mail envelope let me know in the comments below how you liked this project and i want to see your projects if you make one of these please post in our scrapbooking with me boutique group on facebook we would love to see your version of these pocket tags thanks so much for watching i'm gonna go wash up and get all the ink off hopefully <laughs> y'all have a great day and god bless bye everybody